Madam President, last uh, week I came to the floor, you may recall, of this chamber to defend science-based protections for the lesser prairie chicken. And as I said then, that uh, species has long been considered an important indicator of the health of American grasslands and prairies. Today I rise in opposition to two new Congressional Record Act uh, resolutions, which would uh, revoke uh, science-based rules under the Endangered Species Act. Simply put, the Endangered Species Act is our best tool to address biodiversity loss in the United States, and we know that biodiversity is worth preserving for many reasons, whether it be to protect human health because of a moral imperative or to be good stewards for our one and only planet. The first resolution that we're going to consider would reinstate a rule from the Trump administration which limited the ability of the National Marine Fisheries Services and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to uh, designate critical habitat based on best available science. Now, what's uh, critical uh, habitat, some might ask? Well, one, they are areas that our federal agencies identify as keys to the recovery of threatened and endangered species. The agencies subsequently propose these, uh, these areas for protection, and the habitat becomes a focus of conservation areas. The Trump era rule, however, a rule that the CRA resolution would reinstate was especially damaging for species that are in peril due to climate change. The uh, rule uh, prevented the relevant federal agencies from de designating critical habitat in areas that are not currently suitable habitat but could be in the future. For example, when a species habitat range shifts as a result of climate change, our federal wildlife protection agencies may need to account for this shift when they decide what potential habitat uh, we should protect to support their long-term recovery. The number of imperiled species is growing, not diminishing, and more and more species are ha harmed by climate change, which, as we know, is getting uh, more, uh, becoming more and more serious as the days go by. But that's why our federal agencies need more, not less, flexibility to designate and protect habitat. That's the first resolution, SJ Res uh, 23. Uh, the second resolution we're considering today would overturn another science-based rule classify, reclassifying the northern long-eared bat from threatened to endangered uh, species uh, status. No, no, most people, most have never heard of the northern long-eared bat. We don't even think they exist. Well, they do in 37 states. And they uh, are do, they're really good at one thing, eating pests, eating insects. And uh, the, uh, not just by, and, and it's, there's actually a dollar value that's been put on what they do, the contribution they make to agriculture in my state and 30 some other states. And the amount of money is, uh, is uh, over three, maybe four billion dollars a year over three or four billion dollars a year. But these uh, bats are found in 37 states from the far east as Maine down the eastern seaboard, including Delaware, all the way down to Louisiana. Unfortunately, a disease, there's a disease called white nose syndrome. Some people may have never heard of this bat, but they've heard of white, white nose uh, syndrome. But it's spread across, listen, it's 80%, nearly 80% of the bat's habitat range in uh, recent years. Data shows the white nose syndrome has got, look at this, they've killed some 97, 100% of northern long-eared bats in infected, infected colonies. That, in addition to other factors, uh, like habitat loss and climate change has contributed to this important species uh, decline. Bats, again, I'll reiterate this, bats, including the northern long-eared bat, contributed to an estimated three to four billion dollars annually. I've actually heard it listed as high as tens of billions of dollars to our nation's agricultural economy. In any event, it's a lot. And it's all over the country. This is a value that uh, impacts us, uh, our farmers all over the country. But uh, these bats uh, uh, basically provide this service primarily through uh, pest control and through pollination. The Biden rule not only helps northern long-eared bats, but also supports other bat species that are in decline due to white nose syndrome by protecting the species. We are protecting our farmers, our agricultural communities, and the, uh, and the revenues that they depend on. To that end, CRA resolutions that undermine the endangered species and more generally science are, in my view, a dangerous diversion from the real work of protecting our environment and, for that matter, our economy. As recovering governor from a state that has big, uh, a little state, but a big agricultural economy, and as the current chairman of the Environment Public Works Committee, I believe we can protect our environment, including the species with which we share our planet, while supporting 
economic development and job creation. And it's my hope that we can work together in ways to support these goals in a truly bipartisan fashion. With that in mind, I oppose the two resolutions I've talked about, SJ Res 23 and SJ Res 24. I invite all of our colleagues, Democrat and Republican, to join me in opposing them. And with that, uh, Madam President, I yield my time, whatever time I have left, to our colleague from Michigan.